Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are in the third meetup of our Master API Management Series. Today, our wonderful speakers, Bhavani and Sue, are going to be focusing on the API Developer Portal. Uh, something we're doing a little bit different is at the end of this meetup, I will be randomly selecting five individuals uh, who attended to send a MuleSoft certification voucher to. Um, so if you are randomly selected after this event ends, I will be sending you an email tomorrow morning um, to collect your MuleSoft certification voucher. It's just a thank you from our team uh, for joining us on this series. And we hope that you will come back for more of our Master API Management sessions. Couple housekeeping, um, please, please, please add your Q&A to the Q&A tab that I've just started. It is available on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. The general chat gets a little bit busy as people come in, they greet themselves, they add comments. Um, so please make sure you add it to the Q&A so that we can get to all of your questions either at the end of the event or follow up with you after the event ends. And with that, I am going to hand it over to Sue and Bhavani. Thanks so much for being here. All right, thanks everyone for joining. So as Sabrina mentioned, we're gonna go over um, API Developer Portal. So our Master API Management Series has been kind of um, where we're trying to go deeper into each of the products that we provide within our API Management Suite uh, on any point platform. So if we go, if we can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so you probably all seen the forward looking statements, um, but so today we will be uh, talking about roadmap later on. So please be aware that you should make your purchasing decisions based on um, what's currently available. So today we're on our, I messed up the numbers, but um, we're on our third, um, like episode of the Master API Management series. So um, if you want to go check out the previous ones and you haven't seen them, I've linked them on the slide and we'll be sharing um, a part of the slide later too. Um, and then we have two more coming out in July and August. So the next one we'll be talking about API Manager and going deeper dive into how you can make the most of uh, the product. And then the last one we'll be talking about best practices for API Catalog. Um, and that will be in August. Next slide. So just to level set, um, we are talking about our products that fit within our vision of universal API management. And the reason why we came up with this vision as MuleSoft is because API sprawl causes limited visibility and management. Um, you can uh, finish up the animation. So right now, like you might have APIs within any point platform that's being, you know, manage and secure properly, but as you grow your company, as your enterprise grow, grows, um, you're going to have a lot of different other types of APIs or even services that might not be protected. Um, and Gartner, and you've probably seen this stat before, but over half of your APIs will go unmanaged by 2025. And actually Gartner also came out with another stat where they said that over 30% of API growth will come from LLM um, applications that have LLM APIs embedded in them. So as you can tell, like, you know, API management challenges are just only going to get bigger um, as, as if you don't have universal visibility or a way to properly share them, you're going to have limited access to the existing APIs and then also slow time to market and silo best practices. Um, so next slide. And and that's why we have this vision of universal API management on platform. So we kind of break down into um, a four pillars. It's essentially design, govern, manage, and engage. So today we're going to be talking mainly about engaging and creating that developer portal so that you can have an ecosystem where uh, you're not just interacting with developers within your company, but also work with partners and customers to create that robust ecosystem. Um, next slide. And I just wanted to kind of show you how um, in any point platform, you can basically manage the entire full API lifecycle and um, experience hub fits in here because once it's published, 
you might not want to share all of your APIs that's currently shown in Exchange, right, to your external partners or even people within outside of your your um, small or, or within your um, immediate organization, even in your company. So that's why we come up with API Experience Hub. So next slide. So, and these are just some more stats where, you know, customer interactions are becoming more digital and we're seeing that, you know, 72% of customer interactions are, are done over, you know, the web or through the mobile. And 99% of organization use some kind of APIs. So as you can see, like the more um, management that you have over your APIs and being able to reuse them, are going to um, help generate uh, revenue as well as be able to use your APIs in a more optimized way. So next slide. <clears throat> so, but maximizing this API value requires um, effort. So as you can see, 55% of consumers cite lack of good documentation as an obstacle. So you want to be able to have good documentation that can be easily found as well as a way to test out these APIs before they can be uh, reused and embedded into different applications. So, so now, um, well, yeah. So basically, one pillar that I mentioned earlier in universal API management is engage and scale. So we want to be able to um, allow our customers create that curate that API experience for both internal and external developers and be able to manage it from a single control plane. So if you're an API manager or uh, a developer, you necessarily wouldn't need to um, go to multiple places, but then you can go into this API developer portal, be able to request access, see documentation, as well as create that marketplace and a way for you to interact with other developers, be able to talk about it and give feedback. So now I'll pass it on to Bhavani, and she'll talk about API Experience Hub. Hi, uh, I'm Bhavani, Product Manager for API Experience Hub. So we launched API Experience Hub June of last year, and it's our next generation product of API Community Manager. And what API Experience does is it enables you to extend what you already have in Exchange to build this compelling developer portals, which can serve any audience and any community. With Experience Hub, what we are doing is we are providing brand new templates and a, sam and a simple portal builder, which you can quickly design, build, and publish these APIs to the portal in minutes. And it also takes into consideration the speed, the security, and flexibility based on the uh, new tech stack and new architecture that we have built upon on the existing ACM, uh, which is our previous generation product, just as I mentioned before. And some of the key benefits of uh, API Experience Hub is the onboarding is a lot more simplified, uh, which means that the moderation dashboard is in any point. So the admin need not jump between Salesforce and any point for them to just go ahead and create this uh, API portal. So the admins would be able to create the portal, curate the APIs, manage users, set up SSO, and also um, brand and provide these API portals um, just using the AnyPoint control plane. And also there is no um, in-depth Salesforce expertise needed because of all the uh, simplification which we have done for the admin on the AnyPoint side. Um, so the need for the Salesforce exp expertise is a lot more reduced. And AP API Experience Hub is also a lot more secure and performant compared to ACM. And the components which we have designed, the Lightning Web components are, it provides a modern look and uh, is keeping in uh, account the latest UI and UX trends that are in the market. And AP Experience Hub is built on um, both MuleSoft um, for the admin side, the AnyPoint platform side, and on Salesforce Experience Cloud. So the customers can take advantage of the best of both the worlds um, since, since the product is built on MuleSoft and Salesforce. 
So we'll go over some of the product capabilities. Um, so the first thing is Ex Experience Hub is a two-sided marketplace. So the product is built to uh, make, the ex make the experience seamless, both for the admins as well as in the consumer. On the admin side, so an AH admin would be able to log into any point, um, create the portal, or set up that initial connection to Salesforce, create the portal, curate the APIs, whatever is there in exchange, set the visibility of each of the versions that they want to make available in, in the portal, and also select the instances that they want to uh, showcase to the uh, end user and manage the users. When you say manage the users, whoever get requests access to the portal, the admin would be able to approve or reject these users and also configure SSO um, using our detailed documentation guide, which we rolled out in um, December of last year. And then maintain all, all of this can be done on the AnyPoint platform. Um, and on the consumer side, we also made sure that the discoverability and the reuse of these APIs is made a lot more seamless. And also you, they would um, have access to the blogs, the forums, and all the other um, goodies that come along with the Salesforce Experience Cloud. Some of the key um, um, experience change that we have done with the new product introduction is we have provided an easy point of entry uh, from the AnyPoint platform. So where the experience of tile is available within the management center. And also um, the guided UI, um, which lets you create this connection is made a lot more um, simple where you would be able to use connect the connect to the Salesforce Experience Cloud from the AnyPoint. And also we provided the advanced portal builder capabilities um, on the experience cloud side where, where the admins can take advantage of, of all, the, all the new capabilities that are available as part of the Aura framework. And also all the components are based on Lightning Web Components. And just as I uh, spoke before, uh, the managing of the users and the APIs is, is all can be done from the any point um, UI, so there's no need for the uh, admin to get into Salesforce and do anything. So it is it's just by clicks, and it's it's all really intuitive as part of the new design that we have incorporated in in on the any point for the admins. And the templates which we have provided is also a lot more modernized compared to ACM, so which was more rudimentary look, um, but with AEH. Um, so the consumption experience is made a um, lot more um, modern with the, pro the, the provision of this uh, new templates. And requesting access to the API can be done um, either using your existing client application, or you can go ahead and create a new client application and request your um, access. And we are also um, trying to see how we can customize this uh, request access flow as part of our roadmap item for our next release. And API Experience Hub uses uh, the API console, the latest version, which is uh, V7, which is different from the other products within um, any point, which provides um, more seamless um, UI and also um, the look and feel is, is much better than the previous version of the console. So with that, I will pass it on to Sue for a quick demo. All right, thank you. Um, I think you have to stop sharing for oh, me. Okay. Um, share my screen. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'll be giving a quick demo of Experience Hub. So API Experience Hub is built, uh, the management of it is built within any point platform. So that's where I am at. Um, and from there, you can either manage, uh, so add and curate APIs in your portal, manage who has access to these portals, as well as set up, um, figure out uh, your settings. And then if you need to disconnect and add another one, you can go ahead and do that. So. Within API management, all of your APIs that are in Exchange will show up here, including your async APIs. So I have a lot of them. But here, what I can do is I can go ahead and add to portal. 
And then once that's done, you can see that. Can I, can I quickly interrupt you once? There is, there is like an overlap of your, um, uh, your audio. Oh, OK. Hang on. Let me move my mic closer. Is that better? Um, no, I can still hear your voiceover. Um, I can only hear your voice, Sue. I don't hear yeah. the video. Um, oh, maybe it's your video of me on your on your slide. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, yes, I think my video was playing. <laughs> no, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, once the API is added, you can actually edit the visibility. So you can choose between your public instance and all instances. So API instance is any API that's managed in API Manager. So it's behind either a Mule or Flex Gateway. Um, and so you can decide what instance to share. And then also set type of, so who has uh, visibility or who can see the API information. So you can either set it to everyone, so that's publicly available to anyone that comes to your portal, or members require a login, um, as well as admin. So that's anyone who has um, the admin access to Experience Hub, which can be set in any point platform or set it to none. So for example, if you have multiple versions, maybe there's some that you want to share in your developer portal versus not. So we'll go ahead and set this one to members. And then I also wanted to show you the user management piece. So right now I have um, two members and I can disable them at any time. If there is a new request, you can just come here and you can either approve or revoke access. Um, and what's really neat is that now you can also set up single sign-on for your portal. So you'll be able to use Salesforce identity providers um, and set it up. As And then it also gives you all the steps that you need to configure it. Um, so from here, let's go into the portal itself. So this is kind of the back end of the portal where you can customize your portal to to what uh, your organization's brand, as well as set up any new pages that you want that's on top of what's out of the box with Experience Hub. So from here, you can change images, change your title, all that. Also, all the components that are available through Salesforce Experience Cloud is out here. So any of the out of the box ones, you can actually just click and drag and drop into the page. Um, you can take advantage of automation products that Salesforce offers with Flow. Um, and then there's also custom components that come with Experience Hub. So any of this uh, with the Mule logos are the ones that come uh, only when you build a website uh, using uh, AEH. Um, so from here, what I can do is... Um, Go to that website. So let me log in real quick. Um, okay, so now that I'm logged in, I'm able to see the Marty Orders API. And when I click on it, I can <clears throat> take a look at the API specification, which is pretty similar to the experience you have in any point exchange. Click on any of um, the API methods that are available. You can also see the code examples that's generated, as well as try out the mocking service. Um, and then uh, you can also add, so this is an additional feature that you can add where you can add a feed to each of the APIs and you can post. Um, and so this allows you to build that community within your developer portal so that other developers can post like any questions that they have or like add different topics. So like if you want to make feature requests to a certain API, you can do that through this feed. Um, 
and then let me find an API that has Okay, I don't have an API right now, but so if there is an API with an instance um, that's you know currently being managed by one of the gateways, then you'll also be able to see a button that says request access. And the same process that you would see in any point exchange, you would go through it here. So you can create your application and then request a client ID and client secret, and then be able to track um, your usage for that API. So once you make a request, you can actually see like your application, see able to see your credentials and what APIs that you have access to with that information. Um, another additional um, thing you can set up in Experience Hub is through Salesforce Experience Cloud um, and the CMS. So you could, if you have a content management system that you want to bring into, then you can also set up a blog page that talk about different APIs that you have or just um, thought leadership pieces that you want to bring so that this developer portal just doesn't, it's not just where you can, you know, get access to the APIs or see what's there, but then also get information from. So these are just some blogs that we have on MuleSoft website that I brought in, but basically you can also format it differently, add images and whatnot to um, create that robust page. And then lastly, you could also set up uh, customer support. Oh, I think I'm logged into a different profile, but you can set up contact customer support and then um, be able to use Service Cloud on Salesforce to be able to um, support any questions that comes in. So. So that was the quick um, demo. So I will stop sharing and I'll pass it back on to Bhavani. Yeah. Sure, we have some questions in the chat so we can go ahead and answer those. Um, the first one is, are the portals associated to the business group? Um, no, today AEH is at the root org level. So it's not at the business group. But then we are rolling out a new feature called uh, profile-based visibility, where you can control the visibility of the APIs, basically who gets to see what in the, in the portal. So that is one way of achieving this use case. Um, but the portal itself is at the root org level. You cannot create different portals at, for different business groups. The next is our team has started exploring Experience Hub. Do you have any plans to incorporate Swagger format uh, for API specifications or documentations? Yeah, this is um, most requested feature from some of our customers. So we are considering it, uh, adding, adding it to our roadmap, not for this year, but for FA26, this is something which we would definitely consider. Can I combine um, both AEH and ACM components in the portal? Um, AEH and ACM, um, they follow different tech stack. Um, you, so you cannot directly reuse the Lightning Web components, which was developed for ACM into AEH. Um, so we are working on a migration guide of what can be used from uh, ACM to AEH directly, but um, at, at a very high level, it's going to be manual. So there is no direct porting of components or porting of the customizations from ACM to AEH. So we have some basic assets, uh, users that can be migrated. But other than that, if they have an SSO or if they have any specific customizations that is set up for ACM, it has to be redone within AEH. Okay, that brings us to the end of the questions. Um, I can quickly walk through the roadmap. Anypoint API Experience Hub is MuleSoft's. Okay. So um, Experience Hub, from the time it was released, um, so we have been constantly enhancing on the product features. And uh, 
we added some of the key enterprise features that was missing in the product um, that for the initial GA. So we added SSO, um, which is most requested feature for from many of our enterprise customers. So it's available. And then also you will be able to try the uh, use the try it panel before it was just supporting the mocking instances. Now you will be able to try and test out the active instances as well. We also added some additional lightning web component builder properties so that you would be able to control some of these assets and API visibility just by clicks um, using the builder configurations available out of the box. So ne our next main release is going to be on um, sandbox capability. Today, um, you can just create one connection, which is either production or sandbox, which is a limitation for the product. But with this new feature, you will be able to connect to multiple sandboxes test out your product and promote the configurations using your CACD pipeline or Salesforce metadata or chain sets that's available as part of for you to go ahead and uh, promote these configurations. The next is uh, granular user permissions. Today, um, you have um, an AH admin as one of the main role. And this admin, they're more like a super user. They can create the portal, disconnect the portal, curate the APIs, manage users. So they have full control of the portal. Um, but this came in as a request from one of our top customers that, um, that they have few operational roles within their enterprise where they just want them to approve the users but not do any of the other actions that's, that's provided to the admin. So with this new feature, we'll have an operational role where they can just approve the users that are requesting access to the portal. Creating tailored uh, API visibility is also one of the key features. It also solves um, many of the use cases that comes with multiple portals as well. So with this um, new capability, the admin will be able to create multiple user groups and then assign the users to these groups and also assign the APIs that they want to, to be visible only for this set of audience. So that way you would be able to control um, the visibility of this API APIs, so what gets visible to which audience when they log in. So when you have, say, if you have like a secure API, which you want to make it visible only for your targeted set of users, so you can, you'll be able to use that uh, with the profile-based visibility. Uh, but the branding is something which will be same, so we cannot control the branding. That is something which will be enabled with multiple portals. But this, you would have different APIs for different set of audiences who are logging into the portal. And uh, chatter and feed is something which you can configure even today, but we are going to make it um, natively available um, where you would be able to um, integrate feed and chatter as part of your um, templates and when you're creating the user. And also we have made some additional customizations for this component uh, for you to go ahead and use it. And um, enhanced searching and filtering is also one of the capability that is missing in AEH. Um, with the rollout of this feature, you would be able to categorize your APIs um, based on how you define an exchange using tags and categories. And also with this, you would be able to build additional pages because you'll have this data available in Salesforce for you to go ahead and create new pages for these tags and categories. Um, additional portal scalability is also something which we are actively looking into. Today it is 350, 250 is the old number. So you'll be, you can support um, up to 350 APIs, um, which is again a constraint for uh, some of our bigger customers. So we are planning to increase this limit up to 1000. Um, so some of the um, additional things which we need to do is see how performant the platform is if you're going to increase this API to 1,000. But um, that's our goal, to have 1,000, support 1,000 APIs in the portal by end of this fiscal year. Customizing the request access flow is, again, um, one of the most uh, asked feature. And today, it is possible in ACM. And we are going to enable this feature to be out of the box with the uh, AEH, where you will be where the users can add additional fields or trigger additional workflows or connect to their existing gateways. So, um, so this is going to be available in Q3. 
And we are going to add support for uh, platform APIs and maybe a CLA experience uh, for automating some of the components which are being done using UI. Publishing API groups is also something which we have we are planning to roll out. So this is more to be a feature parity with ACM, and it also helps you in productizing in and approving the request uh, for the APIs that are grouped together as an API group instead of going and approving and giving access to uh, API by API. Um, portal usage metrics, it's also um, one of the table stakes for many of the portals that are available in the market today. So that's something which you're going to add out of the box um, where we will be able to showcase some of the runtime metrics around maybe performance, scalability, or uh, availability or the error rates for some of these APIs for, for the APIs within the portal. So this is a dashboard that's going to be available for the consumers to view how performant their APIs are. Yeah, so that uh, brings us to the end of the roadmap. So, so you want to take a walk? Uh, yeah, so there are some questions that came up during the roadmap session. Um, so sandboxes can see only the sandbox APIs from Exchange. Um, no, the sandbox. So we so the APIs are gonna be um, the same production set of APIs. So it's not gonna be a different set of APIs for ex uh, for sandbox versus for production. So it's gonna be the same set. Okay, and then another question is: Can the user access? Um, i.e. client ID be controlled at endpoint level rather than the entire API level? For example, providing access to get requests only and not all endpoints within that API. Um, this is unfortunately not possible because we are so dependent on exchange and there's, there's no way to control it. Uh, but, but this again is something which we want to look at and see how we can enable it because it gets asked a lot. Um, but but it's not there in our current roadmap, but it's there in our backlog. Got it. Thank you. And then, um, yeah, so here we just have some QR codes. If you want to learn more about universal API management, um, we do have a demo of Experience Hub uh, in the API management with any point platform demo series. And then join us for... Um, Master API Management, the Anypoint API Manager Deep Dive uh, in July. Um, so, yeah, so thank you all for joining this session. Um, and then, sorry, there's a couple more questions. Um, is there any plan to improve ACM documentation for your component? Um, when you say documentation viewer component, you're talking about the console? where we get to see the APIs. I'm assuming it is, it's, it's, that's what the ask is for. Um, no, um, so ACM is, is more of like, uh, keep the lights on. So we are not adding or any new features. It's more of like bug fixes and any uh, critical investigations that come in from the customer. So we have no plans to improve the ACM documentation. Uh, and also the next is the current, oh, so the current UI is not that great. Is that a different question or is it, I'm just assuming that it's the extension of the same question. Yeah, I think it's the extension okay. of the same question. Um, okay. <clears throat> but yeah, so yeah, thank you all for joining again. Uh, if you have any questions, I am in the community Slack channel so you can reach out to me through that. And then Sabina, off to you to close us up. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, we will be back with another meetup next week in the online English group. It's all about um, async APIs. So that is a definite uh, attend. And then as a reminder, um, for those who joined us late, I will be randomly selecting folks after this meetup um to earn a mule self certification voucher so if your number um is randomly pulled you will be emailed tomorrow um so we're not announcing it on the call um because i need to randomly select uh but i will email the five lucky winners tomorrow morning awesome and thank you all so much and thank you to our wonderful presenters we will see you back in the end of july uh for the next api management series thanks all thank you Thank you. Bye. Bye.